This is my basement. And if you walked in, you would assume that it's just a messy basement. But unnoticed to anybody who doesn't know, is that this pile of boxes actually has something unique to it. Because when you go ahead and push in the cardboard like this, it gives the basement a new colorful vibe. But you might be asking, Declan, why did you do this? Or what's the point of this? Or maybe you're even asking, how does this work? So I'm gonna answer all those questions and I'll explain everything. Like my process on making this project, some basic principles behind it, and even some trial and error. But first, let me give you some context. One day, I was chilling in my bedroom watching Mark Rober squirrels do parkour, and that's when I looked up at my RGB lights, and I realized how little I actually use them. And that's mainly because I never look at the remote. Part of it is because I do lose the remote, but also because I don't really think about turning my RGB lights on because I don't see the remote. I don't think about the remote. It's just a normal habit in my day to just walk in and flip the light switch on next to me. Which got me thinking about Mark Rober's philosophy. Which is, if something isn't exactly how you want it, you just make it exactly how you want it. Which gave me the idea, what if I was able to walk into a room and just, boom, my lights would turn on without me having to think about that. So, I got to work. So let's open this box and let me show you what's inside real quick. It's actually very simple. You have an Arduino board, an Ethernet shield, a sensor, and a breadboard to connect the sensor and the Arduino. So on face value, the concept is very simple. And that's what I thought until I went to go research this and hours and hours and hours of code and learning later, here we are. Because the thought process is very simple. Why can't, you know, you just make a little light switch and in about a hundred lines of code, have this Arduino talk to the lights, and maybe because I want it to be fancy, depending on this time of day, change it to this color. And how does it know to turn on the lights? Well, just detect a little bit of motion, boom, you got it. The beam is broken, boom, lights turn on. See, the beam part is actually what gets our project to work, because the beam being broken is actually what is our input. And this is the entire concept behind my project. The beam being broken is actually our input. This is similar to how if your garage door is closing and you roll a basketball, it detects that motion and realize the basketball ran through and no longer goes down. The motion tells the garage door, hey, there's something under this. You should go back up so that way you don't crush or hurt whatever is below. But here's the question, how does it know that? Well, if we look closer, there are two parts to the sensor, and they're in constant communication with each other. These are called the sensor eyes. And one of the sensor eyes will send a beam constantly to the other one. It's in constant communication with each other. But if there's an object blocking, the beam can no longer go to the other beam, and it can't see its counterpart. And that's the input. It says, hey, I no longer can send this beam to my brother because I can't see it. Which means something's in the way. Which means I'm going to send a signal that something is in the way and I can't see my counterpart, my other sensor eye. And that is how brake beam sensors work. And they're used everywhere in the world. Like we said, from garage doors to elevators to electronic paper cutters. Brake beam sensors, brake beam sensors are used everywhere. And this is what the entire concept was behind my project. The beam part is what gets the whole thing to work because the beam being broken is actually our input. So it seems very simple, but it actually had multiple layers to it. The first layer was actually how to learn to use the Arduino. I had never used one before. And you might be asking, what the crap is an Arduino? Well, it's essentially a mini computer that can do lots of tasks. And all you gotta do is just program some stuff and then upload it to the board and it was actually pretty simple to understand some of the basic concepts. I very quickly understood how to do some of the basic things. Uh, I used this blinking light thing that they gave you, worked on it in school, worked perfectly, so I got to understand how it worked pretty quickly. Then everything changed. I had to set up the sensor. And that took a while because I didn't know where to plug the sensor in because, surprise, you can't just plug it into the board and just, it all works, it all goes to the same place, no. You have to specifically put it in certain areas of the board to get it to actually connect. It goes hand in hand with your code. 
I eventually got the sensor to work, and every time you broke that beam between the eyes, it would do an input. But that wasn't even the most difficult part of the project. That is what I experienced next. Connecting the lights. Now, I first had to set up the lights in my basement because I hadn't had lights in my basement, so I just had to set that up, and it seemed pretty simple. You know, just go on this app, connect it via your app, just to do some troubleshooting and stuff. And let me tell you, it's these instructions were horrible to deal with. I spent close to hours and even almost a day trying to connect my lights. The footage you're seeing right now is a huge time lapse of almost an hour of just me figuring out how to connect my lights and just trying to get it to work. So other than that frustrating part, I was eventually able to connect them, but then I almost ruined my entire project. So the board does not connect to the internet. You have to add something called an ethernet shield. It's basically a little extension you just put on the board. And I go to put on the board and all of a sudden smoke comes out. I took away the board in confusion of what just happened. And I realized later, I forgot to unplug the power. In case you don't know how serious that is, it's like changing a car part while the car is still running. Yeah, it's bad. Luckily, I didn't burn or damage any of the parts or myself, and everything was all good. But then, it took, no joke, days to figure out how to connect the board to the lights. And I don't want to bore you with all the little coding stuff, but the programming took so long. I was finally able to connect the lights, and everything was going perfect. So I go to put it in the box to go disguise everything, and that's when I realized the box isn't too big. I go to close the door, I go to close the box, and I feel a little click. All of a sudden, the wire pins have snapped. And this was huge, because I had become so close. Just, I had everything working. All I just needed to do was set up that final piece. And unfortunately, everything collapsed. I was lucky enough to have my dad, who was able to help me out and literally tape two wires together. And my sanity of trying to reprogram everything and having to buy new parts was saved for another day. I opted for a bigger box this time, and I was ready to set up. And as I put everything together, I actually realized something. In one of Mark Rober's videos, he actually said this. What we've learned and moved to step four, which is building the final version. So often, people want to jump straight to step four, which usually won't work, but it's almost worse if it does, because you have no confidence that you're close to the optimal design. And I agree. The biggest thing I learned through all of this is the application of the engineering design process. I'll leave a link in the description to where Mark Rober explains it so much better and goes more in depth, but it gave me an appreciation for everyday objects. Like someone had to first come up with the guitar or the toilet or the microwave, and they had to do it from scratch. No YouTube tutorials, no classes, no ideas, anything. Just pure trial and error, making sure that everything was fine tuned perfectly, taking probably weeks, maybe even years of designing. And this is what I got a new appreciation for. And this is what I got a new appreciation for. Because it ultimately gives me a better perspective on what it takes to really be an engineer. So, if you leave anything, go appreciate it and wanting to try to build something from scratch. Even if it's as small as a toy catapult. Using household objects like spoons and tape. I guarantee that you'll have so much pride in creating something that is so amazing. And if you get that thing to launch, however far it is, you'll be happy that you actually built something from scratch and got it to work. So, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. I want to thank my dad, aka James Shea, for helping me through all the nitty gritty problems of this, and helping me when I wanted to give up on the project entirely. This wasn't really possible without you, so thank you, Dad. Love you. This video was also possible due to the fact that this is a capstone project. I want to thank not only the people who assigned this project, as it was a benefit to not only create my product, but also create something that hopefully will impact others. So to you guys, I say thank you.